Hi everyone! These tutorials are meant to be short and sweet, focused on a single thing. Today we're looking at state tree events. Let's dive right in. State tree events are events that you can use to interrupt the normal flow of your state tree and run a specific state that wouldn't be run otherwise. Before we begin, make sure you're using the latest version of Unreal Engine. State tree is evolving pretty rapidly and new features and bug fixes are introduced in almost every minor version of the engine. Also note that you'll need to enable the Gameplay State Tree plugin in order to have access to all the classes and components I'm using in this tutorial. Let's look at a quick example that I have cooked for you. Here we have your classic third-person template, but I've added a few things to it. I've made it so that Quinn, that's the name of this beautiful lady right here, is controlled by our AI controller which we can see here. This AI controller is pretty standard. The only thing I have added to it is a state tree component. In its details, we have linked it to our state tree asset. The player's character is just the regular spectator pawn. Now let's have a look at what happens when we run our test project. As you can see, Quinn moves toward the other corner of the map, but at some point, she stops and jumps. Good. Now let's see how that works in the state tree. We have three main states, jump and wait, which stops Queen's movement, makes her jump and then wait for some amount of time. We'll come back to that. Start timer, which triggers a timer on the AI controller, we'll look at that in more detail soon, and move, which just uses the built-in move to task to get Quinn to move from her initial position to the other end of the map. Okay, now let's look at where the state tree events are used. First, in a jump and wait state, as you can see, we have checked required event to enter. This means that this state will not execute unless an event with the correct tag has been received by the state tree. Then in the move state, we have an on event transition that transitions back to the root of the tree if we receive the same event we configured in our jump and wait state. Let's look at that timer task. All it does is cast the AI controller we receive from the state tree to our AI controller blueprint and call start timer on it. Let's check that out. This starts a 3 second timer and calls the timer done event once it expires. What timer done does is create an instance struct of the test structure we created for this tutorial, which only contains a single float. Then, we create a state tree event structure using the instance struct as well as the gameplay tag for our event. Finally, we take a reference to our state tree AI component and call send state tree event on it and pass the event structure we just created. This will interrupt our move, reevaluate the state tree from the root, and run the jump and wait branch. Here is the normal flow of our tree. Jump and wait is not run because the matching event hasn't been triggered yet. Start timer is executed and starts a 3 second timer which will trigger the event once it has elapsed. Move starts a move that would take more than 3 seconds to complete. The timer elapses while the move is in progress and the event interrupts the move state and we re-evaluate the state tree from the root. Since the event has triggered for this evaluation, we enter the jump and wait state which stops Quinn's movement and causes her to jump then wait for the duration we specified when we created the struct that is associated with the event. We will now have a look at what happens if we disable the on-event transition and then re-enable it. As you can see, without the on-event transition, the move runs to completion and Quinn ends up at the other end of the map. If we re-enable it, Quinn's move gets interrupted midway through and she jumps and waits. One last thing. How do we use the instant struct associated with our event? Well, as you can see here in the wait task, we now have access to the enterEvent.payload binding, which is our struct. In this case, we're using the float as the duration of the delay task. That's it for today. I hope you learned something without wasting your time having to skip through 10 minutes of intro and unrelated stuff. I'll leave a link to the project in the description if you need to look at it in detail. Leave a comment if you have any questions and of course like and subscribe. Till next time!